Among the 2,000 or so visitors here today having their treasures appraised, we were also delighted to welcome Her Majesty the Queen Consort in one of her last engagements as the Duchess of Cornwall. Oh, you're almost lovely, lovely to see you. The sun's come out for you. And she was keen to see our experts in action. Well, we don't know the name of the person who painted it, but we know where they lived. You've stumped Lawrence. We have. <laughs> you brought along. <laughs> How's that for timing? Just as you come along, So it's well, going to be real detective yeah. work. Yes. yes. Well, I hope you find the provenance. <laughs> the Eden Project holds a special place in Her Majesty's heart, as it helped inspire a charity project that she's passionate about. The Big Lunch, launched back in 2009 and taking place each year in June, I was keen to learn more about it. The idea originated in the Eden Project, and it was such a simple idea. Once a year, he brought together communities for a lunch. They chatted, you know, a lot of very lonely people uh, probably hadn't met their neighbours. It's so simple, but it actually gets people talking. And I know you're a very keen plants woman. You I adore garden. So coming here and seeing the plants, are there particular favourites here? Is there anything that strikes you? Well, everything here makes me jealous, you know. You come to these places and you think, why aren't things growing like that in my garden? <laughs> I mean, they just get everything growing, but they have got the advantage of having the perfect atmosphere to grow in. They have. I, I should ask, do you watch the road show? Are you a fan? I've watched forever and ever and ever. Good. Oh, oh good. <laughs> We're glad to hear that. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's my Sunday evening treat. Oh, well, that's <laughs> excellent. Well, look, we're thrilled to have you here, obviously. And I know you've brought along a personal item, mm. as well as something for the Royal Collection, which is hundreds of years' worth of objects collected by the and Royal they've Family. they've usually got something that's associated with a certain region. Holding over a million objects, the Royal Collection has been assembled by various kings and queens over the past 500 years. It's not owned personally by the monarch, but held in trust by them for their successors and the nation. And among this incredible collection is an exquisite snuff box that Camilla Queen Consort wants to show our silver expert, Duncan Campbell. I wanted to bring something that was associated with Cornwall. Yes. And, of course, it doesn't exist now, but in those days there was a silver mine mm, here mm, mm. for Wheel Duchy. Yeah, just 40 minutes away. 40 minutes away. And, and this was the result of, yeah. of Wheel Duchy. And also it was given to a full bear of my husband. It's absolute treasure. There is an inscription inside which tells us all about it. The inside's beautifully gilded, like the day it was made. The man who made it is a man called John Northam, who has various boxes that were made for Prince Regent back in 1800 to 1820. He was a hugely skillful craftsman, extraordinary man. His output was small, but obviously he had the good commissions, and this is just a treasure. In all my years in silver, it's the first bit of silver I've ever seen that's made out of English silver. Is it? Yes. I, I can't believe that. It's absolutely true. I'm so thrilled to I see it. I suppose we're not known for our silver, are we? No, no. no. It's, quite, it's got a nice sort of heavy feel about it, hasn't it? It's lovely. It's, in every way, it's lovely. The front piece is really difficult to make, but John Northam was a very skillful fellow, and just, I'm just thrilled to see it. I'm so grateful well, for sharing it. Well, I'm so it. delighted that I've actually brought something that you've never seen before. Yeah. Well, we were determined to find something that was associated with Cornwall. Well, you couldn't have done better. Mm. Her Majesty had another item, something more personal to her, that she wanted to share with our book specialist, Justin Croft. He brought us a copy of Gray's Elegy in a country churchyard. So I'm wondering if this is something special to you, whether it has special meaning to it you. It is. I mean, I've always loved the poem. And I've always loved looking for really beautiful editions. Uh, so it's captured both for me. It's, uh, it's got the poem, but if you look at the edition, it's also got these wonderful illustrations by Rice. And I think the very special thing is its binding, because it was done by women binders. It was the first woman's bindery. I think it's beautiful, yes. Yeah, so the, this was published for the Guild of Women Binders yes. in 1899. It was a very special organisation that brought together the skills of often young women mm. who were working at a very high level. They had a different touch to the men. Yes. Yeah, it's slightly lighter, if I dare say that. I agree that there's a rhythm here mm. in the simple use of the gold tools. I think these are maybe tulips, very simple, very elegant, mm. very sparse, I think. And this was something really quite new. 
perhaps keying into the arts and crafts movement, of course, but really something fresh and different. Well, it's a favourite poem of mine. It's a favourite poem of so many people. Do you mind if I just read a few lines? I'd be delighted. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee. The ploughman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Isn't that lovely? There's something about the rhythm, it's, it's, the vocabulary. You know, I could listen to you reading the whole book, but I don't think we're probably <laughs> going to have time for that. Sadly, we don't have time. But it, it's a lovely combination mm. of both text and binding. And of course, this is what books are all about. It's something so tactile, isn't it? You just, you just want to. <laughs> you you just want, want to get to it in your hands. Uh, well, thank you very, very much for, for looking at it. I love collecting books. It's one of my passions. Later on, Her Majesty will be joining me as Geoffrey Munn challenges us to play Guess the Mystery Item. It's not every day we get a member of the royal family visiting the roadshow, so I took the opportunity to invite Her Majesty the Queen Consort to join my team in today's game. Guess the mystery object. <laughs> and Geoffrey, you are our jewellery specialist, of course, so you've got three items here, these yes. count as one. Yes, they do. And you're going to give us a couple of options for each yes. one. Mm. And our job is to try and work out what they are. Yes. So would you like to start with that one? Well, yes. It's silver and it's what we call repousse. So the design comes from the back and it's very obviously a pair of eyes. The first option is that it's a votive offering to a shrine giving thanks for a cure to the eyes. And that might date from the 18th century. The alternative is that it's um, a piece of horse furniture and that it comes from Spain and that it's 18th century and it would have been decorated a bridle when a horseman was riding at night and it's a sort of antecedent of a bicycle reflector. Now, I know you are a keen horsewoman, Indeed. so I'm looking for good help yes. I, with I that one. I haven't ever ridden at night um, <laughs> yes. uh, in Spain, to be absolutely <laughs> honest. But, no. um, and we'll see how we get on. What yes. about these two arrows here? Uh, well, these are uh, gilt metal and silver. The first option is that they are wig ornaments from the 18th century, enormously tall wigs, mm. and they got completely out of hand in terms of fashion because some women had uh, coaches and horses riding across their coiffure. Mm -hmm. And the second option, that they're some sort of trophy for, for archery. And this was hugely popular in the mid-19th century, particularly with women. That and what one, about this? Well, that's a very strange thing. It's rock crystal. Can I, can I pick it up? Yes, indeed. It's yes. heavy, isn't it? It's yes, heavy. Yes, but look at that. It's beautiful. Yes. And so what, what, what options have we got for this? Well, the first option is... <laughs> so, you're making me giggle now. Yeah. So, you, is it a Christmas tree ornament? <laughs> so, no, the first option is that it's a charm stone and it dates from the 16th or 17th century. Yeah. And you would take such a thing, drop it into water to imbue the water with curative powers. It's a very beautiful thing, it's actually. It is very beautiful. The second option is a small part of a much more complicated arrangement of a silver cradle and it would be attached to a rope or a chain and then on the floor there would be sort of skittles and after a jolly good drink and a dinner you go to the other room <laughs> and take this thing and try and knock over as many skittles as you can in one moment. Hmm. What do you think? I think it's a charm stone, it can't, it would break surely if you... Yeah, yes. an injure so it's someone. rather beautiful, it's very... Yes, look on the bottom yes. there. What about you, young lady? What do you think? I think the little think? arrows in the middle are probably something that, that the Georgian, Georgians would put in their wigs. I think mm. you're very I'm clever, impressed by your so knowledge. Yes, yes. yes, I think yes. you're very, very, very clever. spot on. Very good, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, very it's, it's over to us now. It's over to us. Where are we so, going to So, ma'am, what do you think? So, should we start with this over okay. here? So, our options were it hangs from a horse. Yes, uh, at, in order uh, in, to... at night. And the other one is a votive offering to a shrine right. in thanks for a cure. For eyes. For eyes, yes. What do you think? I suppose it could go on a bridle. The only thing is it's... If you think about horse brasses and things that go on bridles, they're much heavier, aren't yeah, they? Yes. I still think I'm going with the horse. OK. What about these? Well, I think, I think they do wigs. I agree. I, I think th I, I can see them sticking into in wigs. You know, they always had extraordinary things, didn't they? And then this, I think that is far too precious to use as a kind of yeah. bowling ball. I don't know. Well, I think I might go the other way and say it's going to bowl. It's going to bowl. Or OK. Bowl. Right. 
Well, I think it's massively intuitive young lady here. It's absolutely bang on because they are wig ornaments. And, um, and, and the huge wigs that have all kinds of paraphernalia jutting through and sideways, these are the arrows of Cupid. So that would make complete sense. And it does, it works like this, look. And oh, then I straight see. through the wig. But oh, I, of course, see. not being a massive tease, I wasn't going to tell you that to begin with. So, no, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. And what about the rock crystal at the end? It's not a demolition ball like that. It, it, it is a, a charm stone to keep the evil eye away. What about this? We went for the horse, did we? What yeah. about that one? No, it is, it's sadly not for a horse, and it is a votive offering to a shrine. It's where, where, where was it? Well, it's there? Mediterranean work, possibly Greek or Italian. So yeah. we got one out of we got one three. Out of three. One out of three. Well, it yeah, was one out of three. I was Stan corrected there. <laughs> I was going the other way, but I thought Jeffrey was trying to fool me. <laughs> so I... I can't say I blame you for that. Oh, no. <laughs> Ma'am, thank you so much for being such yeah, a good sport. Yeah. And Jeffrey, well done. Yeah, you. brilliant. Bye.